Hey, I'm Pascal from Morris Pixel. Um, the biggest problem when working on a game project for a longer period of time is uh, keeping your focus on it, but also keeping your enthusiasm for it. And that's pretty much the phase I'm in now. And I have this with many games that I've developed. I had this, this certain stage in a game's development where you're um, pretty much going between thinking, this is gonna be my best game ever, this is gonna be great, and this game is not gonna be great at all. This game is bad, I should probably do something else. This week, um, the week before that, I was pretty much going through that stage and I'm still am going through that stage and that phase. Um, the game is good, I think, or in heading in the right direction at least, but something's missing and it's not there yet. Now I've also been distracted by a bunch of other stuff and uh, non-work related, so that could pretty much taint my whole vision of the project I'm working on right now. I'm just trying to power through all of it and just um, go with it. I have made some interesting changes and little additions here and there this week. So we do have some stuff to talk about, but I'm in this mixed emotion about the game. And I know it's gonna be great and it's already, I'm past the point of re no return. I can't just dump all this. I mean, look at all the art we created. Let me show you. There's so much art already created, a lot of it by Dylan, the intern. Um, we're not gonna dump all this work and of course all the code I've written for the game, all the, the stuff created, all the entities, all the, the AI logic, the pathfinding, a lot of work has already gone into this game. We're not gonna dump it, but we really need to find a way to pull it all together and make it work. So that's where I'm currently at with this game. Let's do the intro. So a continuing fight for me on this game is the AI. I've been talking about it for many weeks. I've been showing you all the progress made and a lot of progress is made and we're almost at a certain place that I think this could work. But then when I'm play testing, uh, something happens and another thing happens. All these little things where your team is just nowhere to be seen or getting stuck behind furniture in the game or just not knowing how to pass around a simple corner or wall. There are just so many cases that don't work. And uh, the vision I have for this game needs uh, these guys to do their job. So um, I've been wasting a lot of time on it. It's now almost December. And decision has to be made. So I've been tweaking and changing and slightly uh, pivoting as i mentioned last week uh, pivoting the game concept a little bit i still want to keep this team because i can imagine this game is gonna shine when you play it in uh, with another buddy uh, two player local because online is gonna be very tough to do but a uh, local two player maybe even four players not sure if that's gonna be a thing but imagine grabbing a buddy and really going for it as a team and then giving each other pointers. I'm at the door, make sure you're at that door and then we breach and having that team play in this game, um, that's pretty much the vision. I'm just not sure that the computer can handle um, all the decisions on its own. So um, the solo version, the single player version will have to have a few changes here and there. And then what I've been doing this week seems to have worked. Um, the mission, my goal is to have less of a stealthy gameplay, but more just an action gameplay, go in, take everything out, and not so much stealth. I know stealth missions would be awesome, sneak around, but you can't do that if the computer is controlling characters, because you just don't know what they're gonna do all the time. Most of the time you can uh, see what they do, and I can keep them in safe distance and things like that, but then they don't know when they have to go in for the kill. And there's just a lot of work to make that happen and make it uh, convincible to the player. And that's the biggest problem. Uh, this game is gonna get bad reviews if the AI is simply not at that certain level. And I don't think I can get it at that level. I've seen AAA games that can't get it at that level. So uh, it was a bit foolish to think I could get it at that level being a solo game developer all by myself. I mean, these AAA games have teams working on AI, 
non-stop for a couple of years. I want to create this game within a year, everything. It's been a little bit of a foolish idea, but the AI that's in the game right now has a lot of functionality and use and we can create something with it. And um, that's pretty much what I'm trying to push the game towards now. Um, focusing on what's there and what can be used and then build a game around that. So even if my AI fails at moments, it shouldn't harm the player. The player should still be enjoying itself and just have cool events and cool moments in the game um, that distract from the AI that might be doing silly and stupid things. That's pretty much what I'm trying to work towards now. And while doing that, of course, it's a big letdown that my vision isn't gonna come true. Um, but yeah, so be it. I want to create more games, so this game can't take years and years. I need to finish it, I need to complete the game in the best way possible and move on to the next game or keep pushing updates to it, whatever. Uh, but the vision I had is pretty much not exactly gonna happen with this game. Maybe the next, maybe the sequel will have all that because now I've wasted a lot of time on creating this AI. So next time I can skip all that time and pretty much uh, push that AI towards new stages. So uh, that's also what I've been saying in all these videos over the years. Don't try to do everything at once in your um, current game. Just uh, sometimes you have to uh, leave things as they be and learn things for your next game. Um, you can't put a lot of new stuff into one game because you'll have to learn a lot of stuff. You have to waste a lot of time learning those things and not really building the game and it can all fail and then you end up with nothing. So for this one, uh, the AI is working up and running. It's usable, just not in the way I originally envisioned it. But eh, can't have everything. One of the first changes I did and I'm still tinkering with what I want here is that when you start a new game, we now start in HQ, uh, headquarters and everything is around here. This was the city view, um, might still go back to the city view. I'm not really sure what works best. Uh, maybe the first time you start a new game, I'll go in the city view and then after you do missions, you always return here. It's, um, yeah, still have to decide those type of things. Um, as you can see here, there's animations and we now have computer and consoles. The green arrow shows you that there's something there. So you can move over there and um, start the mission view, which I won't just yet. Uh, let me also move over here. Bunch of animations. I think I already showed these uh, a few weeks ago, but we now also have these animations and um, these just happen to be all the bold guys. There's also a scientist with a lot of hair. They are picked randomly and placed at these uh, DNA sequencing device type thingies. So i um, been adding more and more animations and uh, lots of uh, credits to Dylan for doing that, the intern. Personally, I think um, that's the extra power I have on this game, having Dylan there doing a lot of extra animations I personally would not have done. Like this guy, the computer, I think it's like six or seven frames if i had done that animation on my own while also creating the game it would have probably been two or three frames um, maybe not even animated at all so uh, like these consoles as well a lot of stuff happening a lot of animation frames i would have done maybe two or three animations or very tiny because it's just a lot of work and combining that with actually creating the game it would have taken me way too long for something that's just there. So um, a lot of extra effort going into the graphics, thanks to uh, Dylan. Well done, DMAC. All right, street view, city view. I've changed some things the way the street enters. Um, let's start, well, you can see already over here. We have some barricades, we have some enemies, and we're now not driving all the way to the, to the front. We're driving somewhere here so that the street has more um, gameplay in it. This was just drive to the front door and enter the building. And now you'll actually need to find a way towards that building, which is still pretty simple. There are just a, a few rare guys here and there, but it makes the whole street view have more purpose, which I think is a good thing because it looks amazing. And I can imagine, um, for example, I want to add some stuff like sci-fi. So there might be a meteorite dropping in your city view. Then you head over to that area where it dropped. And there will be like enemy creature, critter, the spidery things crawling uh, towards you on the street. And you have to just take them out. And that's going to be a mission. You don't have to actually enter a building. 
this will just be a mission same with these windows um dylan will be drawing some uh, guys hanging out of the windows uh, throwing stuff at you shooting at you maybe so there will be more stuff happening on the street as well and it won't just be uh, building areas now we can go and enter this building You'll also notice that your squad is now much more active. It will be moving a lot more often, a lot more closer to you. Um, this actually helps the AI somewhat. They will stick closer to you. They will look more active and it will also allow you to do faster actions and take out enemies much faster. Um, of course, this is all still very simple and basic and this guy's head is floating strange um it's all still very simple the enemies aren't that strong and, and active yet but uh, that's something i'll be working on and they will have more weapons they will hide and they will pop out of things it will be more interesting but right now um it's not it's simple as that although they are already a bit smarter than they were they will now actually track you and trace you and try to hunt you down it's just a little bit buggy of course, now we can do a breach, and as you can see, they're still moving to that door. So that part of the tactics squad stuff is still in there because it, it's amazing. And we can just uh, command breach and uh, enter the building from two sides. And we take out these guys and then they do stupid stuff like this, which is the reason I'm not happy with it. Uh, this is fixable, but there's a lot more things that just aren't there and just they destroy the whole uh, concept of it. So I need to fix those things. Also, the doors, as you can see, when we now breach a door, I um, actually added a little punch to it by creating a door that actually flies out of it. So that really gives a little extra thump. I just need to add some screen shake to it because this is an indie game and indie games have screen shakes. So um, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Just trying to get everything up and running. And another example of the squad stuff not working. Where are my guys? Where are they? Let's see if we can actually move them over here. For some reason, they're just, um, they can't find the path from where they are. So yeah, they're stuck and um, stupid. Now I'm controlling them actually. Uh, which key was that? Forgot which key I used for that. Oh, no, man. I forgot I actually added that option. I can switch teams if only I know which key I used for it. Oh wait, I think, yeah, the Z. So that's still an option. I'm not sure if I want to keep that in the game, but you can uh, switch your team and uh, control the other two, which might actually be interesting. I'm not sure. So yeah, um, not a lot of stuff done. I've just been distracted with a bunch of things. I talked about it on the Discord. Uh, hop on the Discord if you want to know or whatever. Um, it's almost December as I'm recording this which means I'm working towards my end of year review video. Um, this is gonna be, I think 30th of December is on Thursday. It's gonna be on the 30th, almost the last day in the year. There will be a video uh, talking about how the year was for Orange Pixel, if I'll still be making games next year. And the week after that will be January and I will do my uh, plans for 2022. Wow, I've already written down a bunch of things I want to accomplish next year and um, there's gonna be a couple of fun videos. We're almost at 10K subscribers. Thanks and hi to every new subscriber. That includes you, even, yeah, you know it, the weird guy in the back. Oh, thank you for subscribing, are you? S All right, so um, that's it. Not a lot of stuff to cover this week. Um, had some uh, great different type of videos in the previous week so if you haven't watched those check them out on the channel and of course we got some cool videos coming up at the end of the year um all right that's it thanks for watching like subscribe comment below hop on the discord come say hi and i'll see you next week bye